about to get started. All right, I think that was a successful intro play, so, unlike bro. last week. I think, I think we, we actually yeah. got it done. We screwed that one up last week. I had complaints, complaints, complaints about the volume, man. What do you guys think? Did we get the audio normalized on that? Did we? Uh, did that play pretty clean? We looked at a different way of doing it. And uh, we've got chat right here, so if you see us looking this way, that's where we're at, yep, looking yep. at you guys. And uh, I guess before we start, what are you vaping tonight, Adam? Oh, I'm actually vaping. I was hoping Dina would pop in here. I'm actually. Uh, oh, I'm vaping, sure Dina'll be here. Vaping, uh, vaping Dina Gans uh, Boss 3000, which is going to get um, engraved tomorrow and everything. Actually, I try to use the boxes for at least a few minutes before I send them out to engrave and make sure everything's working right. So, figured, what yep. the hell, I'll use Dina's during the show tonight, and then you're testing David Star Shadows. Yep. What juice you got? What tank you got? Uh, no mad juice. <coughs> you well crown with a .15 nickel coal. Right on you the saw about that crown, man. I know. I love it. I love it. Mm, gave you a VCMT and he won't even touch it. Crown, crown, crown. So, since we're talking about the Boss 3000 tonight, Adam is letting me kind of torture test uh, Mr. Star Shadows. What we got on here? The Hulk? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. We got the Hulk on, on Mr. Star Shadows. We'll get a little up close later there. I've actually showed that one up close. There's uh -huh. a video actually on our YouTube channel where I show that one up close yep. in detail. I actually use that one pretty up close. And since Adam did give me this, of course, it's got his boring ass crown on it <laughs> with uh, just cancer. It's good menthol juice from, uh, from Zodiac. So actually, that's a lie. That's Ice Storm from... That's Pamsy Pam Juice. Pamsy yep, Juice Ice Storm. Ice Storm. So what are you guys vaping tonight? <clears throat> Have to let them catch up here. Anyway, so what we're going to talk, we'll bring y'all through what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about uh, at least one new product, the the uh, Theorem RDA or RTA, RDTA. What a fucking disaster. I hear you. We'll talk about that. Um, obviously, going to talk about the Boss 3000 a little bit. Pretty proud of that thing. Hey, baby. Um, going to talk about all the options you can get with it. In the video that I did on YouTube, I didn't really go into detail about right, every option on it. So, yeah. And I try to keep it short. I didn't want it to be a 45-minute video. Tonight, we're going to go into a little more detail about that. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the hot topic at hand. Yep. The, the FDA. And an article we've kind of found that kind of reflects on something we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I think it ties in perfectly to what we was talking about with uh, David Slay on the phone the other night. Or on Skype with us the other so night. So, Brian Tibbetts is on at Mississippi. No surprise. You Christina's on the infected. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah. What are you guys vaping tonight? What are you guys drinking tonight? I've, uh, I'm double teamed, but I've got some Diet Coke that I kept at least for the last couple of weeks. And a Diet Mountain Dew. No, no liquor for me, but I'm sure some of you guys are drinking. So what are you guys drinking tonight? What are you vaping tonight? What juice, what tank, what RDA, RTA, what, uh, what mod are you guys using? Miss Lisa is on Miss Lisa's Delight. Imagine that. Well, being her namesake, I would hope. I, I would expect. You. That would You'll see the Vaporized Nomads uh, commenting there, Chardonnay does. Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's actually Lisa commenting from home. She's hacked into my account. Yeah, Nomad account is Miss Lisa. And so. she'll be standing by for any questions, concerns, hairstyling tips. I'm sure she would be good at that. She I'm, she does a great job styling your hair. I hear you. I mean that that takes hours every day. I'm I sure. I just couldn't stand the cap anymore. You know, I've been wearing an IBO cap and it's felt, and that thing was so hot today, dude. I would imagine the it humidity's was. killing me being back home. I'm not gonna lie to you. I get so used to not being in the heat and humidity, and I'm yep. suffering right now. Now I've lived in 17 states, and Mississippi, as far as heat goes, it's on the oh, way. It's just killer, dude. But we've got our we got our pool open. Uh, all the kiddies get out of school locally oh, on the 24th. Oh yeah, man. After the 24th, every day is grilling and swimming at my house, and you guys are all welcome. So it's an everyday thing. Um, tugboat with twisted messes? Is that the uh, tugboat box mod, Brian? Is that the uh, twisted tugboat? Now, I mean, that could be a lot of things. That could be a tube. That could be their new DNA 200. That could be their series box. It could be their standard parallel box. I mean, tugs out a lot of stuff. And I will tell you, I got. I was talking to you about having a friend who's in the anodizing business for doing some limited edition Boss 3000s. Yep. Um, these boxes, that's you know, that's that's what you use uh, the aluminum boxes for yep. doing that 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 really um, high level masking and anodizing. And I've got a guy who does that, so that's something we might see down the road. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really good work. We're gonna see some cerakoted boxes down yep. the road. Um, yep. We'll see how it goes, man. Fuchai TFE4, definitely a nice little setup. Yep. 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 So we're using four different mods with an RX. <laughs> Has anybody Jones. besides me ordered the new uh, RX 2000 or RX 200S? That's got the uh, I think it's a Joytech chip with the bigger screen, kind of like the uh, the so, VCT. Yeah, just like the VTC Mini. From VTC. The, uh, really nice looking screen. I've always enjoyed that wide screen too. that reads out horizontal. It's just a really nice look. I'm looking forward to getting that SN because it gives all of the information of you know what's going on with the vape and temperature and wattage and. 
I'm really excited to get that dude in. Since V2, I love that device. Yeah, that VTC Mini had a lot of information mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And and you know, it was pretty accurate. Still, it was pretty accurate little box. But mm -hmm. as far as running temp control, everything, I didn't have any issues with that one like you have with most of the kind of starter budget kit temp control. On which one are you referring to? The flask? I'm talking about the v, the VTC Mini. Oh, okay. That you were talking about comparing the screen to. Um, I so think if it's anything like that chip on them. I'm thinking the temp control. I think it's the same. I, I really think it's the same chip, except they put the, it's a 0.93 inch screen. It's a little yeah, bigger, bigger than screen. yeah, I so they get a little more. more information. The point on the article that I read about it was to get a lot more information on the screen, so everything about the vape on the screen and stay in the same form factor. So really excited about that. I noticed the vapor flask that that was brought up. I've actually kind of conceded my fight to vapor flask on the uh, the battery thing. Um, but still having the issues on check battery after, or not check battery, weak battery after just a few vapes. Um, and I think it's like you don't have that problem with the Fuchi or with the IPVD3 because they use what's called a boost and boast chip to actually run at that level of wattage until it actually is not in so what are they doing? Are they using like pulse width modulation? Of no, no, they use, they use a uh, kind of like a... Uh, Something that a Some converter, capacitor, and transfer, capacitor, absolutely, yeah. until the battery reaches a certain floor, maybe 3.2 volts, to where it can't do it anymore, and okay. then it, it stops doing it. So, so they got to be using some kind of step-up capacitor. Well, yeah, the, that. the argument that I had that maybe they're all doing it, and maybe we just don't know, it's actually not true, because there are companies using technology, like a, a capacitor, a step-up converter, to actually get that wattage until they hit like a floor on the battery charge right. level. So, But it's still a good device. I use, I'm, I've got my stout right here. Been we, using it, yeah, we using the light. Quite, I've actually been using that quite a bit the yeah. past couple of days since I left the house. I like the mod. We'll talk about the RDT whatever A. Um, the cuboid with a Griffin on top, stainless clapper, sweet. Some pretty, good. some pretty good stuff out there. What juice? I haven't seen any juice called yeah, it's out. Got the Cyclops Poseidon. I'm not familiar with that either. Mm. Uh, it's William Smith. So uh, Christina was using Affected. Miss Lisa's using Miss Lisa's. Imagine that. <laughs> anyway. So I'll tell you what, just real quick, we'll just step right into our uh, products at least, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, now. well I um, actually, gonna, you know. spent a lot of time with the Theorem, but <coughs> why don't you go into detail? The Theorem, and I, you know, I'm a big fan of the RX, big fan of the uh, the DNA 200 Relo, big fan of uh, the Indestructible from Wisemech, a big fan of a lot of products that Wisemech's made. Um, and a lot of them were, were uh, collaborations with j -Bo. I'm going to say their winners were j -Bo Yeah, designs. but now this is a collaboration with j -Bo and Suck My Mod. And basically what you have here, for you guys that are familiar with the avocado, um, basically half of this device is an avocado. If you go under the deck, you've got exactly a velocity deck, two big wick holes. But when you get onto the other side, ah, you want to do any zooming in on this? Yeah, I'll yeah, give you that. Let's see, pull that over there. Let him do a little zooming in here. Give us just a second. Right. Sorry, I lost my um, cursor here. Where am I at? Right. Down, over. Come on over. I'm still lost my cursor here. There we go. Oh, it's right slow because you're on the white paper. Sorry, y'all. I'm having problems here. Now click on it. There you go. Okay, got it. Let me bring us over here a second where I can deal with this. Not only, okay, we're not using that screen. So if you look, I just pulled this piece out. You able to focus there? Yeah, I guess. So this piece is to kind of block off and reduce the size of the air chamber. Because down in there, like I said, one side's an avocado, the other side is basically just a fill port. So basically the top half of what you're seeing is what an avocado would be. The bottom half, again, this plugs in to reduce the size of the air chamber to cover the filling port. Now this thing comes with two different airflow rings. One airflow ring is for this side directly over the coil. The other airflow ring has one on the opposite side. That is pretty well ex just extremely redundant and counterintuitive because you can't put a coil on the other side. There's not a place for the wicks to go if you was to put wicks on the other side of this device. Because again, on the, I guess it would be your, your right, um, there's no wick holes down there. So you would have to put both wicks on the left side of the device from your perspective. Well, if you've got both coils on the left side of the device, what is the point of having air on the right side of the device? It's just kind of redundant. And my honest opinion, we'll go ahead and back on out, jump on all the way back and focus back. You know, kind of my opinion is if any of you guys have seen the avocado, 
the avocado to me was a challenge because I, you know, I, I four years ago I was trying to take Genesis Satomizers and use them as auto drippers. Didn't have a lot of luck with that then. Having a little more luck with it now because they're putting a lot, lot, lot bigger wick holes down in there. But, uh, you know, the theorem, in my opinion, and, you know, I spent a lot of time with this thing, some days, and I just absolutely fucking lately hate it. I think it is one of the worst designed atomizers I've ever used. Um, and it's like somebody took the avocado and stapled a bunch of random shit on it to have some extra engineering and completely fucked up what was a pretty good atomizer. And that's my, you know, I the flavor... I caught myself over the course of about a 12 hour period, I changed the cotton and cleaned this thing seven, eight times, tried different juices. Every juice that I tried did not taste like it was supposed to taste. And that's using the notch coil, the new notch coil that comes with it. So, you know, it come with two, the, the leads off of the notch coils are very small and I popped one very quickly so I'm down to the last notch coil. Um, the flavor for me is not there. The uh, you know, it's got sufficient airflow and for a single coil device. And, you know, I, I prefer dripping in single coil kind of way, and this is really just kind of auto dripper. That's what I was telling um, you earlier. I was really expecting, I will say this, up front with it being the top airflow design, it just kind of comes yep. kind of down at the coal and, and back sure out as best it can. I didn't expect tremendous flavor from it. I'll be honest with you, the, one of the first top draw RDAs I remember was the Aeolus. And I won't say it's the worst daddy, okay? Because I got to deal with the Big Fogger 5.0. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I was absent um, for that. So having said that, it just, I'll be honest with you, this type of top airflow that Jamie's showing you right now, where it so, comes yeah. through and just kind of right back out the mouthpiece, right. it's just never going to make great flavor. It, it, The air is not forced around the coal like it should be. I mean, right. that hot, dense flavor is always going to come from the bottom of your coal. That's why even on my side vented RDAs, I always pull the coal up just above that window right there because I really want the air underneath the coal to get that hot, dense flavor. You know, and it's something you're just not going to achieve with a top airflow design similar to this. I want to talk about some other problems. Um, another thing is the airflow. So, you know, the way it works, you set your airflow ring down on it, oh, and, and no. then it's got this other piece. Get me started with and so shit. this piece threads on... And then while you're threading this thing on, Heart of God, you hold it right. Oh my God, you just gotta get it just fucking right. And then when you get it right where you, you know, it gets to where it tightens down, then it shifts the airflow. So I mean, it's just like fight after fight after fight. And then after you've got it all set up, got it all working with this ridiculously small mouthpiece. I mean, this is just, oh, this is ignorance incarnate. The flavor's just not there. And then, you know, let's add insult to injury. This happened to me several so times. Chris Muller's saying a couple of things here. He's saying if you flip it around, it's got indirect airflow for flavor. Um, I'll be I'll honest with you, Chris. Place. I didn't mess with it that I way. Maybe I'll mess, I'll mess with it after this just to give it a fair shake, give it the other side of the coin. I see. I did try that. But see, here we are with the other problem. When you got to try to take it off, you get to a point that you're just free spinning. There's nothing that stops that glass. Nothing stops that glass. I will say that's an issue for pulling off the RDA. So here I am Nothing trying though. to take it off. Yeah. And it's not. The only way now, and I'm going to just make a mess just to prove a fucking point, is you have to, yeah, let's get something there out you of here. <laughs> now you have to pull the fucking glass off. You have to pull the fucking glass off, lose all your juice, and then you can get a hold of it to take it off. This dude... I mean, I've reviewed some shit before that I hated, but I don't know if I've hated anything more than I hate this damn thing. And for Wisemech being, the, you know, the company they are, and Jabo being, you know, the designer that he is, and Suck My Mod, I know he I'll knows his shit. I'll be honest with you, well, Suck My Mod, I mean, that's a guy that's got the mechanical ability of a fucking stop sign, so it does not well, surprise see, I don't me know. his name see, I don't, is on here. I don't, I don't know, I don't know him, I just, <laughs> I just think that for this to have made it through quality control, and for a guy like Jay Bo to have thought that this was a good idea blows me away. Um, so, for me, this will go down in history as one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever had to review. Adam, your thoughts. I know you kind of gave a few on the way. Uh, for but, me, uh, I, you round know it what? 
I, that was my main issue with it, Jamie. Honestly, I think, you know, I need to, I probably need to play with that coil in another RDA or something similar. Just for me, overall, it's just a gimmicky design, man. It was something to to get out of the market, sell for a couple of months, and, and nobody's ever yeah. going to pick the damn thing up again, just to be honest with you. It's yeah. going to be, it's going to be just like the Aeolus was. It's going to be something people buy the shit out of because mm -hmm. unfortunately it had Jabo's name on it. I really well, yeah, like you know, and John stuff. John Hitchcock makes a great point. You know, loves his RX. I love I've got seven RXs. I've got their DNA two hundred. I just ordered the new RX two hundred S. I love all, almost every product I've ever ordered from them. This I just don't know how it made they it. Make made some it out there. They make some good products. I would never stuff. say they're like terrible company. I'll hear me say yeah, that. Yeah, I not just at think all. this right here was a was a gimmick product and it is what it is. I I mean, think if it was we wanted to play with a Genesis tank we'd Go back to the future. And drill, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and drill out some old Genesis's and have some something really cool. But you know, to give you guys some reference again, the uh, if you took an avocado and fucked up half of it, you would have the <laughs> new uh, theorem, and that's basically kind of what I got about that. Yeah, and I get that. It, Chris keeps saying, and, and Chris, we're not insinuating that everybody else needs to hate this anyway. No, it's um, just my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So there's going to be products you love and hate them. You know, it's like I love these boxes we make. I'm sure somebody out there is going to hate them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's just our take on it, brother. Don't get, um, don't feel like we're attacking yeah. you because you like it. Just um, my opinion. So having said that, so that's kind of the, the product we were going to go over this week because I know everybody's talking about theorem. I see it popping up everywhere, and mm -hmm. I was expecting a lot better, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, so what was it, last week? I guess we talked about, but we've talked about it weeks past. Which, which when, when we talk about the perception people have yep. of the vaping community. Yep. And some of the things we've said are, you know, people think it's kids. They see these things that are cloud comps. They see people out here blowing these huge clouds in all the wrong places. The counterculture environment. You know, the skater kids. The, kind of anarchist almost. Absolutely. Um, it's just uh, the fringe culture people in vape shops. So we were popping around looking at news articles. and just kind of pulled up vaping news. And what do you know? Wasn't this the first article we first pulled article up? First article we found. Vaping news. So let's flip over here and read something. Um, this is by Hugo Rifkind's guy. I'm... I'm I want to say he's out of London. I don't remember exactly. Uh, somewhere in England. Anyway, um, scroll back up. I want everybody to see the title real quick. The vaping craze isn't about nicotine. It's about gadgets. Um, so scroll down here. I want to read y'all some of these quotes. He talks about going into a vaping shop. And y'all feel free to look this up. It'll pop up right up. If you go to Google, type in vaping news. Um, so he talks about going in a vaping shop. He says it was perfect down to the last detail. Paraphernalia all over the place. Meanwhile, out the dealer, I suppose, had dreadlocks and bohemian clothes and the bearing of an alpha male and almost no vocabulary whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say, unfortunately, this is what a lot of people think about the vaping community that knows nothing about it, really. What they see out there, and, and this is the thing, Jamie, and we're having a cloud competition here next weekend when Pip comes with suicide by next Friday night. Sure. And I got to tell you, I was really on the fence about whether to have that or not, and I hope I hope some people will come to it and see a more mature way of handling things here. Mm -hmm. The reason I have been on the fence so bad about it is because I think that's part of what lends to that perception. Yeah. And unfortunately, and there's, there's people like me and you that, that really love this, and, and mm -hmm. that's kind of just... A little part of the hobby and there's other people that's all they get into is just showing their ass <coughs> yep. um, and that's really what this article talks about right here um, you know basically the guy just goes on to say anybody that's whining about nicotine this is his perception obviously anybody that's whining about nicotine that it's not the nicotine that's not the problem it's mm -hmm. the paraphernalia the the insinuation of drug use, the mm -hmm. insinuation of this yeah, because uh, this article, class of people. Yeah, this article even talks about a girl laying on the couch and somebody said she had too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's just, it's bringing that counterculture element that people hate into vaping. And it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. And, you know, like we talked about last week about MSVAA and, you know, their intentions of, you know, educating down at the consumer level and at the shop level. I hope that that's something that we see them really bring into shops about how the environment is what is killing the industry. It's not, it's not the nicotine. It's not the health. Yep. It's not anything other than the environment that they're seeing created. Yep. And when they start to see the element of, you know, drug use and, you know, the you know the next error or the next uh, you know revisiting of the hippie movement in vaping products, then that's when the establishment decides the hell with it exactly. and and shoots it down the road. Exactly, <clears throat> and that's dangerous. 
that, no doubt it's dangerous. It's, it, it's sad. I don't know what else to say about it. It's a, it's a sad state that we live in. And I'll be honest with you, there, there, there's not, I'm not sitting here claiming all shops are reputable oh, and no, no. doing a good job. Far from that. I think you've heard me bitch about that numerous times. But when you've got local shops, and hell, I'll call them out tonight, like the Vaporwise in Oxford that that publicly sells to miners. Yep. It's, it's not ever denied. It, you can go over there and watch it for yourself. That's the kind of shit that the FDA wants to crack down on. Absolutely. Having said that, we'll kind of move into FDA a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of people out there running around like chickens with their heads cut off right now, screaming the FDA is going to kill us. They're going to come murder us in our sleep because we sell vaping products. Mm -hmm. um, first off, let me say this. There's a lot of misinformation out there. First there's of, lots of just it. Just because people are, you know, it's like when the stock market crashes or has a recession. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there that want to see it crash just so they can see a pandemonium. And that's a lot like what's going on right now mm -hmm. in our industry, in this business. Is that there's a lot of people out there who are fire starters and yeah. want to see things go haywire. So they'll post just all kind of just malarkey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thrive on chaos. Um, so having said that, let's talk about the FDA. First off, they, they put out some regulations that should take effect somewhere between 90 days and three years, depending on how you read it. And it's so broad. Yeah, yeah so that, broad. That it could literally make a stove with a skillet illegal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it is so broadly defined that, uh, I mean, literally, if you can vaporize nicotine in it, then it is deemed illegal. Yep. Well, that goes into so many areas, and that's why you have the lawsuits that are out there. I mean, there's so many lawsuits because the law is so vague and so broad that there's uh, yeah, good luck trying to enforce it. Yeah, that's what I uh, talked about earlier. You know, people have obviously come in the shop because they read Facebook mm -hmm. and they say, oh, vaping's being outlawed and shops are going to be shut down. None of that's true. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of one single shop being shut down, mm -hmm. not one manufacturer. If anybody shut down, it was of their own choice. Mm -hmm. And or they did something really stupid. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, so having said that, I mean, for the FDA to truly enforce everything that people rumor they're going to do, they would have to have a task force generally the size of our military. Mm -hmm. And they don't even have uh, any sort of... Yeah, they've got of, nothing. Uh, I mean, no so it's just kind of ridiculous. And I know all shops of people are going to deal with it in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's people that'll fill out forms. There's people that'll try to sue people. Mm -hmm. There's there's all kind of different ways to do it. And however people deal with it is their own business. As far as how we're going to deal with it, vaporized nomads and pile top vape lounge, um, well, some of a bitch that's bigger than me, that can whoop up. my ass, yeah. comes down here and takes my keys and locks the doors, there tell me go. don't come back, that's the day we'll stop selling. But, you know, I just don't think that'll ever happen. I think that the law... I, th I think the government and the people wanting to do this hurt themselves so bad with oh, yeah. that law yeah. um, because of the level of ignorance in that law. Um, whenever it comes down to this, you know, to sitting down at the table and doing this again, I think you'll come out with a with something that's that's substantially more um, you know, effective or reasonable um, that makes sense. What they have out there now is so stupid and so ridiculous. There's no well, way just, that, just, like, if this goes to the Supreme Court, do you really believe that a Supreme Court justice is going to look at this and say, well, anything that can vaporize or atomize uh, nicotine is now illegal? If a lawyer, any lawyer fresh out of law school could bring up the stove and the skillet argument, and what Supreme Court justice is going to agree with that or go along with that? So, I mean, I have a feeling this, this never, there's no way this ever makes it to a point of, uh, of, uh, I want to say, uh, to where they're monitoring it and trying to police it. I just don't think it ever gets that far. And who knows? Who knows? We could be totally could be wrong. wrong next week. But I guess we'll see. Yep, yep. Um, so what do you guys think? While, uh, when Adam, while Adam moves into the other one, I'll, uh, I'll watch the chat. So, Adam, why don't you uh, go into I'll tell you what, I'm going to talk the about the Boss 3000 a little bit. Kind of I'll give you all the background. Some of you on here on the chat know it. Um, so... When Vaporized Nomads as a group, not a business, got started early on, uh, I was pretty much in the mech mods, didn't even really do a whole lot of, and at the time, you could get regulated mods, but they were pretty terrible regulated mods. They were variable voltage sticks and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, early on, we did some things with MRN, mm -hmm. um, with uh, another company out of the Philippines, we did our, our first box, was actually a wooden box we did. Um, later on, we did a, a revolution style box that was a little changed up. Just staying with the times. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then later on, kind of 
wanted to do a Raptor box, had some ideas about it. Uh, found a company called Doc Mods uh, in Utah. Nurse Mods or Doc Mods, they kind of go by two different names. And they started kind of manufacturing for us because you got to remember at the time when this vaporized nomad as a business first kind of started to grow, I had a full time job set at Lisa. So mm -hmm. we really had to outsource most everything. So we outsourced our first Mod 3000, which was 120 watt. Uh, Raptor box. I don't have one sitting here. They're usually sitting everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then our Mod 3000 on chain, which was the same P plus uh, squared hammer style box that was on regular series box. And then I come in here and I'm screaming the praises of the DNA 200, and you won't even give it a damn chance. Well, I did eventually. Eventually. Well, have a say. I just want to expand on that a little yeah. bit. The reason we stopped using Doc Mods and Nurse Mods, um, you know, as things started getting churned out, there was one or two quality issues. Not a big deal. They were still doing all right there, but the um, you know, we were paying stuff and wasn't getting it for months. Mm -hmm. You know, we were supposed to have it, you know, next week. And obviously people to our customers were waiting on it for months as well. Right. Uh, to the point that I started having to give refunds and just, it was terrible. I remember business. that. Just constantly waiting on FedEx. Constantly yeah. waiting on FedEx. And so, and there was things that, you know, I'd get a box here and, and there were problems with it that I'd have to personally, I would have to personally fix. There were things that irritated me about some of the things we got here. Right. And I would actually stop, take my time, take things apart and redo them. So Quality control headaches before you could actually let the customer have Exactly. It. So, and I'm going to be pretty ticky about my boxes. I mean, you, you know to. me, I'm a collector as well. And I want, when I get something, I want it tight. I want doors mm -hmm. tight. I want wires run right. I want everything jammed up, ready to go. And nothing to have to mess with. Right. So originally, I thought about doing an SX three fifty J box, the ED chip. Um, a couple months ago, Jamie really got me on the DNA two hundred. I started using one. Um, somebody saying we're blurry. We're actually watching it back, pal. I think your feed's bad, honey. Yeah. Um, looks super okay. Yeah, we're ten eighty p, babe. Okay. Um, anyway, like I was saying, so. Started digging into it. Um, I wanted to use a similar style box to the to Mod 3000, mm -hmm. a blockier box. Um, ended up using a G Plus box from Alpine Tech, Victor uh, Hong. I actually wish I had got him on here tonight. Great guy. We need to get him on Skype. Yeah, we'll get Victor Hong here one night. He designs these boxes. Actually, I didn't tell you this. Um, so we're working on a second box, a, a miniature version of this. Oh, no, we talked about it. We talked actually, about it. with the DNA 200, dude. Oh, we talked about. I should have a. I should five. have a P plus size box here tomorrow that Victor's actually wanting me to put a DNA two hundred chip in and show him the sled and everything, and mm -hmm. he's going to start manufacturing that box. With Not what, just for me, but for with, everybody. With what size battery? That'll be. A I'm going to try to hit. A, I'm trying to fit a thirteen fifty yeah. mile battery in Seven, there. Eight, in the word that we'll have to see how that works out. But um, anyway, so I think it'll fit. All of that, we you know. Well, now you've met the engraver now at this point. You know they got a couple of a couple of spots down the road. Actually, he's right here beside us, right on the other side of the house. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let me show the box real quick. If you don't mind, you might have to focus here. I think, I think focus and David Starshot, I'm actually going to use his box tonight just to show y'all some of the custom work we do on the back of the boxes. Um, so let me see here. Try to get the glare off this. Hang on, I gotta find the. the I gotta find the damn. Right up here, brother. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, there's the front of the box right there. I'm trying to get it up close enough where we can kind of read the words. Um, there we go. Sebastian Lorenz kind of designs everything. Vaporized Nomads logo related. This guy in Switzerland has been phenomenal. He just has always designed our logos. He did this one. Um, and then on the back, David decided he wanted to do something custom. So he got the, the Hulk with the Boss 3000. And, of course, we got the serial number on the side. In the future, all the boxes will read in block letters, Boss 3000 down this mm -hmm. side. And the back panel we're going to leave completely empty so if somebody wants something personally engraved on it we'll do that have you got the um, menu uploaded in that one yet yeah menus okay. uploaded on all of them um so we're using a 12 millimeter my tech switch which is very clicky very i think clicky. but you are using the onboard dna switches for the up down which will work pretty well of course you get the usb uh port for e-scribe and for charging um, inside the back door, like I said, it's all made here. Now it's Jamie. He sat back here with me and messed around a little bit. All these are made by me. Every piece, every solder connection, everything on this box. Is Amanda's label. Uh, Amanda's okay, yeah, I grabbed that out of the back room. Um, so like I say, you'll just see my signature inside the back door. And then as far as the actual internal part of the box, um, really what I've tried to do here is just keep it super clean. Um, all the boxes I've seen out there so far always have a bunch of wires kind of tucked in up here, which kind of bothers me. Um, not that I think it's sloppy, I just think that it's real close to that 510. And if you ever truly use this box as a 150 or 200 watt box, 
this is going to be a real hot area up here. Really wanted to leave this for some venting right here and leave this completely clean. Um, right here on the side of the box, you'll see where the external firing switch wires are, and they could be super thin. Did use some their their uh, trying to think of so they're stiff wire so it could form them right and then everything goes to the 510 your 510 loop is actually hidden back here so it'll all work right and then you'll sell the bottom right here now these batteries you'll see and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to get knocked about rewrapping batteries but let me tell you what we did so we went through about 12 to 15 different battery brands until we found an 1800 mall battery that was actually very close to an 1800 mall setup right um and we took that battery, we bought them in a huge lot. The problem was when we bought these batteries, where the wires come out were in complete disarray and not, I'm not going to say disarray, they weren't in the right configuration. Just not compatible. And that's what you'll see on a lot of other uh, DNA 200 style handle boxes like this. That's why they have the wires up here, mm -hmm. is because they need to be twisted or formed some way that you just can't make the connection down here on the board directly. So what I did was bought a whole bunch of cells, tore them apart. I rewired myself to the configuration I wanted, turned a six wire out into a four wire out, mm -hmm. uh, resoldered the board to take a four wire input instead of a six wire from the battery, mm -hmm. um, eliminated those and was able to tuck this down in here real nice and tight. So um, that's the reason the battery's rebranded because mm -hmm. I physically had to rewrap the cells and I figured, hell, if I gotta put a sticker on them, I gotta put a vaporized nomad you sticker on them. a custom three from the sled? Say what now? The custom 3D printed sled. Yep, custom 3D printed sled up there. And actually, the guy from uh, Mod Sleds does that for us. Um, what does it fire down to? 0.05 in wattage mode and lower than that in temp point, control. Point two, point 0.025 in, uh, in, in temp mode. In temp mode. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. like your standard. But that's not that's not really, you need to get back up close. The programming is where it's at because nobody oh, else yeah. is doing this. In anybody I you tell go you, this buy, is hard to focus on sometimes. Any, any place that you go to buy... A DNA 200 device anywhere you go to buy. Let me try hold this steady here. Anywhere you go to buy a DNA 200 device, nobody has any presets already loaded for you. So the Canthal A1 is where you start off, and the Canthal A1 is going to be your wattage mode on this box. Um, when you kick into this, you're in straight wattage mode, no temp control. Um, here, I'll kick it in real quick just so you show how the screen reads out. It actually says watt mode right over beside it, so you don't think you're in Canthal temp control mode. Mm -hmm. um, two clicks of either up down button will get you back in this menu. Um, you got nickel 200, and this is not the nickel 200 program that comes with a DNA chip. I actually found one I like a little bit better off a of steam engine and ended mm -hmm. up loading a CSV from it. Mm -hmm. um, let me go back here. So nickel 200, stainless steel 304, stainless steel 316, titanium T1, and I, I may need to add that to it because there's two titaniums. T2 is a little less common. Mm -hmm. This is set up for T1 wire, nichrome 60, nichrome 80, and this one's gonna blow your mind, copper. Copper wire. Copper wire. Um, so let me, here, I'll hit that on nickel. So you'll see where your readout is there, nickel 200. Anytime you flip into a material on this mod, let me just, I'll go to titanium. When you select on that, you're always going to have the readout right there beside it, so you're never guessing did it get it in the right program or not. Now, that's that's special. There are, like I said, there's a lot. Like, for example, if I was to look at my Relo here, my DNA 200 Relo, I am not able to in any way, because straight from the factory, um, it comes with nothing loaded, period, other than in wattage mode. So now I've got to plug it up into eScribe, learn how to make a profile, upload a profile do all of these things where you've done you know all of the research all of the, the testing all of the you know testing all of the wires and seeing the accuracy of the TCR profiles I mean you're literally talking about hundreds of hours of effort in the programming of this device oh, yeah. that no other single DNA 200 device period anywhere on the market has anything like that and it's not just the program it's the actual what actually takes the time you can get a CSV file yeah. it's using that it's CSV file and, and going through it yep. and, and you hardly ever hit it right on the first one I gotta be That's honest right. with you um, so I'm pretty proud of these boxes, believe me. I, I put my time in. Stevens had to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, even Bobcat's help. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Let's kick that up. So one of the options man? for these boxes um, is to get a, a back door. And actually, David's right here. Like I said, he's got the Hulk on this one, and he's actually got two back doors for this one. Because you can get, when I say one-off piece of artwork, you can get an absolute one-off 
piece of artwork from Miss Amanda Cave. We call her Bobcat here at the shop. Um, this is one of the back doors she painted. Um, I don't know what to say about it. It's just it. amazing. Um, so if you get one of these, you can be guaranteed you won't see anybody else with this mod walking around. So after we strip these doors down, she does her paint on them. This has actually got eight layers of automotive clear coat on it, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about using it and having it chip off or fade off or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. And she's kind of antique this one right here. If you can see, the, the paint kind of looks a little cracky underneath, and I can assure you it's probably the slickest thing you've ever felt when you run your finger oh, down it's it. totally smooth, yeah. Um, so a lot of work into this. And this is actually not a huge upgrade, $40 upgrade for a one-off piece of artwork on your back door. But mm -hmm. um, So just another thing I'm really proud to be able to offer here. Yep. And so, you know, it's just in the price point, so it's going to be retailing for what? $250. Mm -hmm. um, for, you can get, for $15 extra, you can get literally anything you want engraved on the yep. box. Um, that's the reason we left the back panel undone. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, for $40, you can get a, a one-off piece you of artwork on the back artwork. door. You also mm -hmm. get to choose, um, basically, if you just order it standard, don't ask for anything. You're going to get a right-handed setup. That way... Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You're looking at it right-handed. You're looking mm -hmm. at the screen, up, down, buttons are right on it. Mm -hmm. um, you can always leave a note that you vape left-handed. We'll switch it left-handed with mm -hmm. the firing button switched on it. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to come stock on these is, oh, I didn't even think about talking about this. This is one of, one of the biggest things with me right here. Most Hammond-style boxes you get, back door open, um, are going to have a 510 set on the deck, usually in the center. Um, if you can get that. See the 510 poking up there? Totally flush. Yeah, you do not. Um, actually, Aaron, I'll do this myself just like everything else. Um, these 510s are actually flush milled into the box. By and hand. The reason I did that is I use the Temple RDA a lot. Mm -hmm. and I don't want a 25 millimeter Addy with a gap all the way around it on this mm -hmm. box. And a, right. a 25 millimeter looks just perfect on here. So if you order one of these and don't ask for anything, what you're going to get is a bare tube, mm -hmm. a smooth top, stainless steel 510. Now you can get a notched one. You can get a notched one. We'll take a look at one of those mm -hmm. right now. Well, I can't remember. Is this? Uh, I don't know if that one's notched or not. I'll tell you what. Well, I can get one out of the back, but everybody knows what a notch 510 is. Right. On the notched ones, you, we use the Fat Daddy uh, 22 millimeter notch 510s. We do them in black stainless. What do you prefer, really? Um, in fact, Jim Sharon's got a murdered out box sitting back there mm -hmm. right now. Absolutely. Um, and so the thing, really, what it comes down to is. And, and, you know, talk about there's a seven-day lead time because these are all 100% made to order. They're all custom made. They're all made by exactly. hand. You know, this is not some, you know, mass production, throw them down the line. I mean, you can literally customize so many different exactly. things on this device. And so with that being every one of them is made to order, seven-day lead time on shipping. And, uh, man, for the price point, I, mean, I did some research on some of the mass market products. And some of the things in a similar category is generally a bigger box with not with none of the programming and none of the options. The things in the, you know, say the fifty dollar cheaper range, again, none of that stuff, but also, you know, a thirteen hundred mile battery, so forty percent, you know, reduced battery life. And uh I'll, definitely a, a drop in quality and a drop in manufacturing. Well, I can tell you this, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you buy one of these and say if you Jamie Westman mm -hmm. Boss, which you've got one coming, but Say you buy one of these and you get it and you take it home and you say, hey, I want to plug it into eScribe and do something. When you mm -hmm. plug that into eScribe, it's going to come up and it's going to say Boss 3000, number 111, mm -hmm. JC West. Yep. Um, so it, my point is, it, if you've ordered something from us, you are getting mm -hmm. something from me to you. You're not it's getting something custom. that Lisa walks out, pulls off a shelf and mails to you. Absolutely. When you order something, I start thinking about what I'm going to build for you. Absolutely. So these are 100% made to order. And so, I, you know, some may not like the seven-day lead time, but, you know, you, quality takes time. And like you said, the, these aren't pulled off a shelf. When you order it, you put in the options you want, upload the graphics and any images you want, and your box is made for you. So that's yeah, what Lisa's uh, saying. Special. She's saying, tell everyone how you use it personally before you send one out. So, yeah. Yeah, everyone else. Um, just like right now, I got these finished a little yep, while I'm, before the show. I'm beating up David. The batteries. And yeah, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to use the programs in it. I'm going to make sure the buttons work right. I'm going to make sure the back door sits flush. I hope y'all can see this. There is absolutely no, no door rattle on these. None. 
let's face it, any podcast <coughs> box every once in a while, you're going to get one that has a little door rattle in it. What happens? I'll work on the doors physically until the rattle is completely gone. Now, you may look at this box and think this is like your standard Hammond box. It's not. It's substantially smaller than your Hammond box. It's about eight smaller. millimeters shorter than a hex um, <clears throat> And but, but as far as how narrow it is, it's a ton it, more It's narrow. a little bit narrower, I think, six millimeters. It really feels a lot mm. narrower in hand, and it is slightly thicker. Um, yeah, it's a little thicker this way, but your height and your width. Is, oh, there's uh, stars. Oh, that's David Slade. David Slade, yours should be in the mail tomorrow, I guess, brother. Mm -hmm. um, and Lisa's saying, you know, I've already mentioned that. Or we personally use it. Um, so, yeah, I guess I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know. It. I just you. know I'm waiting on mine. Yeah, I hear you. So maybe next week I'll be vaping mine. We'll see. We'll I see. So. I got what I decided to do for years. Like I started on, I'm like halfway through it right now, and I keep thinking, like, why did I start this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I see. I you know I back when you was doing the other chip, the SX350J, I ordered one. Not that I wanted that chip, because honestly, I don't like that chip. Um, for me, that chip is a lot more fiddly. You know, and yes, you can dial in things directly on the device that you can't with a DNA 200. Um, I think, you know, kind of plugging it into eScribe, which you've already done all this work, you know, kind of setting it the way you want it, uploading it, and then you're done. I think that's a lot easier than button pushing and trying to configure it from the yeah. device. So that's one thing that, and the onboard ambient temperature control, um, that's things I like about the DNA 200 over that chip. So I bought one back then, um, and just because I wanted a teal box and nobody had that SX350J in teal. Well, these being the same price point, I decided to hold off and apply that towards one of these, and so I can't wait to get mine. Now, my wife, she's on the list for number 42 because the answer's always 42. Um, and so right now, there are a lot of serial numbers still out here. A lot, there's a several below 10, a lot of them below 20. There's three below 10 right yep. now. And uh, so, you know, if you, any guys, when Stephen puts them up on the website, um, if you want to put in a request for a serial number, if it's available, throw in a few different numbers. Yeah, Steven's actually got them on the website right now. He's got um, the options up. Oh, uh, yeah, he's got the options up. And if you don't see an option or won't, call me. Yeah. We'll literally try to take care of it. We had a guy, Cameron Rose, call me today, said he wanted a dark blue one. Not issue. Nice. Um, we do gray and green. Uh, I think that's probably going to be our two biggest colors to sell. Um, green is obviously our original color, and the gray just looks dope as all get out. Um, I'm excited about this, man. I mean, I, I've just I spent a lot of time studying the market. You know, like Twisted came on and he saw the picture, liked it. Um, I think whenever there's some good quantity and stock built up, some videos to get out, I think this will be a hot product. I think it's really going to do well. And uh, also, if you guys know any shops, Adam is going to be doing some wholesaling to shops out there. Yep. So uh, send some shops this way if we can get them in your area. If you're uh, if you're not local to here. Yeah, appreciate yeah. you, man. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. I'm excited about this damn box, I don't box, like my man. juice, but he loves my mods. I don't like your juice, but I love <laughs> this fucking mod. Um, man, that's all of our numbers. And we're at, we got, we still got 12 minutes, so what else can we talk about? Flea know. market, local people. Oh, yeah. If you're local to the area, we'll be at the uh, Tupelo Furniture Market slash Flea Market this weekend. Uh, Pound Robbins will be over there with us. Um, and we'll have a lot of juice over there. Um, mm -hmm. Several lines of our juice from over here that are, uh, you know, we sell here in the store we'll have over there. And uh, actually, going to take some things over there that we don't sell a lot of in the shop to see if maybe there's a market for it there. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to take, uh, but we've got a lot of mech mods here, mm -hmm. and we don't sell a lot of mech mods. So, um, you know, if you come by over there, you can get a nice RDA and an authentic Mafia Lotus mod and mm -hmm. battery and charger. Probably right around hundred dollars, hundred hundred twenty dollars. So you're gonna cut some deals on some stuff that's not moving in the shop. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take it over there, cut some real deal. And yeah, plus, we'll just be there all day if you want to come hang out or whatever. Hang out. Um, I mean, we'll have our just how we have our juice tester set up here in the shop, mm -hmm. the individual tester for every juice. We'll have it right there. Absolutely. Um, and you haven't officially announced any like the details for the cloud comp is. Uh, yeah, I actually have. Oh, I, I put out a video okay. the other day. I don't know if everybody saw it though. Um, cloud comp will be at seven p.m. next Friday night. Five dollar entry fee. The grand prize a boss three thousand box. Um, I'm gonna win. No now, matter how, if only three people come in, they'll compete for the boss three thousand. Well, what box. are the rules? The rules are this: single battery, two mech mod only. Your choice of RDA. Batteries allowed to be Sony VTCs three fours and fives, LG HE four, Samsung twenty five hours, and that's it. Okay. No EFS, no brown LGs, no pink. What about Samsung's. how low can they build? Can build down to point one. Must be verified beforehand by Stephen Burns, who will be here to verify that. Um, JC will be on hand. Yeah, I'll be. 
J- JC is actually going to be one of the judges for the cloud count. Mm-hmm. Um, God damn, I wanted to blow. No. Nope. Okay. You can't win. Does the, that mean the I get loss. free entry though? You can get free entry as an exhibition style. Since artist. I'm judging, I get free entry. You get free. Well, it's just for the, to be in the cloud count. Oh, five dollars. Oh, there you go. Come in. So anybody comes in, just five bucks to join in the cloud count. I say Pip Gresham will be here. I'm sure she's going to bring all kind of stuff with her. I'm uh, sure Thomas she'll get Costello's like to flying over from California. Yep. David Slade uh, told me he's going to be up. He's actually going to be up on Saturday. David Slade oh. is not going to make the count Friday night. He'll be here Saturday. Okay. Debbie Gilliland's coming over from Arkansas. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to remember who else. I don't think Christina's going to be able to make this one. Mike's in New York working. Won't be able. To make it hopefully lisa will be able to pop in from time to time i'm sure lisa will be in and out uh pam obviously will be here um she's gonna she's gonna do a black with a killer clouds logo that's oh, she about the boss she, she is talking about her, her boss 3000 and yeah actually I, I made jim sharon one of the things coming to pick it up yesterday he did a gun metal that's murdered out black 510 black buttons black switches it, it's pretty sick um Hope that's not that is playing in it. <laughs> now I'm I'm gonna play it whenever we uh, okay. go out. It's free. It's free and threes. Huh. It's, it's free and there's gonna there's going all kinds of events. I don't know what that is. He must have. <laughs> oh, come to Columbus, Ohio, June 11th and 12th for oh, a bait meet. Me. Okay. Bait meet, Columbus, Ohio. I was totally missing it there. Yeah. As far as the the actual meet greet, whatever you want to call oh, it, here with Pip, that's yeah, totally yeah. free. Come just in, the cloud comps got eat, the entry fee. Enjoy company. Yeah, just to enter the cloud comps is, is five dollars. And honestly, I was just hoping the five dollars from the cloud comp would offset the parts for the Boss 3000 right. giveaway. Absolutely. Um, Obviously, I think that's a pretty good prize for a local cloud comp. Oh, absolutely. Um, but anyway, yeah, I can't no objection there for me. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm glad to see Thomas coming in. I can finally give him that dick punch I owe him. Uh, and I'm going to deliver it. Uh, I'm a man of my word, so I may need you standing behind me when I do it. But I'm going to punch Thomas Costello in the dick when he gets here. That would be awesome. And we're going to have a good time. That's so, what I got. That's what you got. You got something else? I got nothing. Hey, we really appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate your support. But hey, like we always say. Hey, peace out, out, nomads. nomads. Uh, That was the wrong one. See, I couldn't do it perfect. Oh, you got it, man. Just hit it. (laughs) Oh, you didn't wind it back there. Killing me. No, it's not. I was doing that one. Sweet. Yep.